the Audlem Festival of Transport has taken place for many, many years and we've been doing this for donkeys. Dad's here in his MGB GT. <laughs> I like it the world. It's a lovely oily ragger this one. An MGB GT for sale. Bagel deployed. Now is this the four cylinder or has it got the six cylinder Vitesse engine? Love the MG1300, I know Harley was pretty taken with this one. Another example of wonderful sign writing. No surprises seeing a tub of this in here. Well hi folks, welcome to the channel. Now it is a few days before the Audlem Festival of Transport, or Transport Festival, I forget which, but either way, this is booked in, it's on booked in for Sunday. So we thought, well this evening it's a beautiful day, and the weather's been pretty mixed lately, it's not been very good at all, so uh, we thought we'll make the most of this, take it for a quick run around the block, and just see how things are doing. And it is very, very, very dusty. I'm not sure if you can really see that. But yeah, it is super dusty, so we will, or, or I rather, because uh, his lordship appears to have disappeared all of a sudden, but I will give this a quick rinse down, just so that and it can be drying off this evening, it's nice and breezy, and also the sun is out, so it's a good time just to give it a quick rinse down, just so it's looking presentable before the weekend. Then it can go back in the garage and we'll get some fuel. I've got to, I'll take the jerry can into town and get some petrol in that so we can chuck a few gallons of petrol in it. That should cover us for the day. And all being well, we should have a nice run out. But of course, you never quite know. Last year we booked in the Standard 8 and the Dodge Tourer, little Dodge as was. And we had a failure to proceed. It was a very damp day and about halfway there, the Standard conked out, the fuel pump packed up. Um, I've got a bit of a history of problems with fuel pumps lately, as you may well remember. I've had a few problems with this <laughs> before now, so uh, uh, yeah, fuel pumps and me don't always get on. So last year we had a bit of a problem en route. Um, we ended up putting the standard in a farmyard and carrying on the journey. We all piled into the back of the Dodge Tourer that we had at the time. Um, that one's gone and this replaced it pretty much. So uh, yeah, this is going to go and then Mrs OCC will probably... I think she'll probably take the MX-5. I think she'd like a bit more practice in the standard or the Renault, even if the Renault parts came. I think she'd probably like to get a bit more practice in it before committing to taking it to a show and a little bit of a road run especially. So we'll take this and then probably a little yellow convertible as well. But yeah, it's pretty grubby. I think I've washed it once since we bought it many, many months ago. It was towards the end of 2022, wasn't it? So... Uh, yeah, I think it's probably high time. It has a little bit of a clean-up. We took it to a pub meeting a few weeks ago. And that was successful. We've had a few other successful local trips as well. So, yeah, we just thought, I think hopefully things are just starting to bed in a little bit after a few little gremlins early on. But it's such a lovely thing. You don't get too many commercial vehicles like commercials like this pick up on the, uh, the Audlem uh, Festival of Transport, so, you know, fingers crossed, it'll be look quite nice amongst all the cars that do turn up there. Another reason for giving it a rinse is, before too long, I would like to give it the old boiled linseed oil treatment. I did it to Big Dodge, was it last year or maybe the year before, can't quite remember which now. So it does help protect them quite a lot, as I'm not into polishing. Plus, this, is, this isn't always a really rag truck, so... Uh, the linseed oil treatment I think would really really suit it and just protect it quite nicely and just give it a little bit of protection because obviously it spent most of its life in California which is a jolly sight drier climate than it is here in rainy old England as it has been lately. Lately it has been particularly appalling the weather so <laughs> yeah um, I think it definitely would benefit it just to keep it in nice condition really the beauty of using the boiled linseed oil is you can really get it into all the creases. You can work it in to the creases really, really nicely and just help protect them. Feed it in, gloop it down into the seams and then it sort of, it sort of dries off but not completely. So you just get like a nice oily film within all the joints on the body. And the body is so sound on it. 
all the cab corners and everything, the sills and so on, are so good that it really wants to stay that way. So the best way of doing it is to get some oil down in there. You can spray oil, you can do all sorts of things, but I think the boiled linseed oil is probably the way we will go with this one. I think one of the guys that owned it was called Walter. So maybe we should nickname this Walt. Let me know in the comments if you agree. I'm not really one for naming things, but if we were going to name this, I think Walt would be pretty appropriate really. Unless you've got any better suggestions, of course. There we go, that's better. Right, so we'll just move it over there and it can get the best of the, let the evening sunshine and hopefully dry off. So, ignition on. There we go. Shouldn't need any choke. Shouldn't need any jabs on the throttle to get the accelerator pump working. So let's just give the starter a go, and fingers crossed. Of course, three-speed gearbox in these, and like the Anglia, reverse is where first would normally be up there, first is there, second is where you'd normally find third, and top third is down there. So yeah, just like the Anglia. Right. You can just stay there now. If the weather on Sunday is really bad, then we will press the standard into action. It has been in the garage of late, but I've just moved it outside. Yeah, this one has stood in on several occasions already this year. And if the weather is really, really wet, then I don't really want to take the Dodge out. The only simple reason being, there's wood in the rear, in the rear pickup bed, there's wood in there. And if it gets really sodden, it could start bowing when it dries and that would be very very bad indeed so uh, you know a bit of a shower that doesn't really matter a bit of rain that doesn't really matter but if it's going to be really tipping it down for most of the day then we probably won't subject the wood floor to that and in case instead rather we will take this that seems like a, a perfectly acceptable fallback plan um, what have we done to this recently well i did mention in an earlier video that the inlet and exhaust manifold gasket here the one that was on was looking pretty rubbish and there was evidence of like this sort of rubber sealant type stuff around here which was very bad and that could let air in and cause all sorts of problems so the other evening i whizzed the manifold off moved it out of the way cleaned up the surfaces and put a new gasket in and uh, also lately it's been a little bit problematic getting here to start it always starts but it takes a bit of churning sometimes even after you've hand primed up fuel into the carburetor itself so uh, I found that if I whizzed out the three jets that you can get at there's one there, a small one, another one there and there's another one down there if you whiz those out um, and in this one, I think it was this one in particular I forget which is which jet is which but I think it was this small one here was the problem and it was quite blocked and it took a little bit of cleaning just to sort of get it to uh, open up again and then it started pretty much first turn from cold, which it hasn't done for quite a while. So I think that jet has been blocked for quite some time and gradually getting worse and worse. So that was a good little job. So new in that manifold gasket, cleaned out the jets. Fingers crossed, that'll do the trick. And otherwise, you know, apart from slight, slightly tappity top end, um, it's been running okay. Well, that's the, you know, just a few little jobs that we've done on the standard of route late. Nothing much on the MX-5 or Big Dodge. Um, yeah, that's pretty much where we're up to. So... The rest of this evening, I'll just have a quick bit of a more of a tinker with the pickup, just sort of check things out, check the oil, that kind of thing. We'll get some fuel, like I said, in the jerry can before the weekend, put some fuel in it, and then hopefully it'll be ready to take part in this uh, show and road run, fingers crossed. And here's an interesting thing that was donated to the OCC garage just a few days ago. Thanks for that, Rob. Um, a 1920s Humber radiator, a huge radiator assembly. Quite an unusual core. I don't remember ever seeing a core like this before. Honeycomb, yes, but this just makes it a bit more interesting. But this is a proper, 
proper vintage radiator assembly and it's been, I mean it was sat in Rob's sister's garden, I think it was, for about 40 years just on display and it's an incredible thing, it, it almost takes two of you to lift it, it is that heavy it is spectacularly heavy, it really, really is It's a bit of a, I'm not quite sure whether to actually try cleaning the surround up a bit or just leave it with this sort of green verdigris look. I did clean the badge up a little bit, just so you could read it a little bit better. But do I leave it like that? Sort of original patinated look, because it is, what, 100 years old, give or take. Or do I see if I can clean it up just a little bit? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, what did tick on me in particular is this plaque on the side. It is desirable that this radiator be filled with soft water. So none of this, you must do this, you must do that. Yes. It is desirable. You can just imagine a gentleman who came up with that particular message. All very polite. But thanks, thanks so much to Rob for donating that and also several old car brochures to the OCC garage. Very much appreciated. Okay, well it's Saturday, we've just fueled up the pickup and we thought it really needed something to go in the back because an empty pickup truck just doesn't look right. So we dug this out, an old fairground ride based on a 60s Lotus. I've not seen this outside for probably 12 years. It's been tucked away in the garage and I can only see the front end. But yeah, it's quite a heavy old thing, fiberglass. It's got metal wheels, it's got metal intakes, a carburetor trumpets. And these are metal and these actually clean up quite nicely because I just wiped some oil over those years and years ago. But it needs a good clean, a jolly good clean. But we thought that would look perfect in the back, maybe on top of a wooden box so you can see it in the back. But how cool is that? This came from a fairground ride. I bought this, like I say, 12, 13, 14 years ago, something like that. Maybe a little bit more, it may predate Harley actually. I don't think you've seen it at all. Well, maybe it's been there longer than all right. So this came from a kids fairground ride up in Barn Oldswick. Well it's Sunday morning, a little bit cloudier today. But fingers crossed it'll be dry for the most part. Well we're here folks, quite early. Cars are just starting to arrive here at Hankelow and then I think it's about half ten or eleven o'clock something like that. They close off the road over here and we have a parade down into Audlem itself which is all very jolly, everyone comes out and waves and so on and the weather forecast for this morning at any rate is looking pretty good so fingers crossed there'll be an excellent turnout. We're over the back, well the MX-5 is here but the truck is over the back there because the commercials tend to go over there. An X-350, the aluminium bodied XJ Right, let's have a look see who's going to arrive today then anyway, we're going to stand out on the road. The Audlum Festival of Transport has taken place for many, many years and we've been doing this for donkeys, probably 15 years, something like that, we've taken part, so we always try and fit this one in. It's a really great turnout. Like I say, we're fairly early, so uh, that field will fill up pretty well, I think, before the morning is over. <laughs> Someone just came over and gave me this lovely shell lubrication book with a Morris Minor Traveller driver's book. How cool is that? They said they actually wanted to give it over to us, so they came here specially to hope, hoping to catch us here at Audlin. But yeah, how cool is that? Thank you very much. And we like yellow. TR7, TR7 Sprint in fact. No, that's Spitfire 1500. Dad's here in his MGB GT. Great to see it out and about here today at Hankelow. 
So all these cars you see here will be taking part in the parade down to Wardlam itself a little bit later this morning. This little moss started out as a GT6 many years ago. The Vauxhall Viva HC approaching. Followed by another MX-5 Mark I. Ooh, we like that. Shropshire registered. That's a bit more year at the back. Ooh, yeah, a little Morris Space Camper. Ooh, a whole gaggle of classic cars. Ooh, another big Farina, the Austin A60 Cambridge. How cool is that? Sunbeam Alpine next. It's one of the early big finned cars. Beautiful bullnose Morris. Mini 95 van. Little mini behind that. Little midget. Matching pair of bay window VWs next. And behind them, a lovely Rover P2. It's got a mesh grille. Originally, it would have had a slatted grille. Lovely, lovely car very much a pre-war design it could be a post-war example but yeah I think it's probably post-war earlier cars had spoked wheels if memory serves but please let me know in the comments if I've got that wrong Pontiac Trans Am we see this quite regularly that lives fairly local to us another beautiful Farina Cambridge this time an A55 Mark II those were built 59 to 1961. MGB GT with Webasto roof. Everyone. 
Renault 21, we've seen this at Hopley House and the Crew Heritage Centre before now. That's following in the recreated vintage uh, Scout truck. We've got a Fiat Panda, a lovely Sunbeam Talbot, complete with pop-up semaphores. Great little Fiat Panda there on an E-Reg, 1987-ish, I think. Two sunroofs. Oh yeah, twin sunroofs, yeah. Daimler DS420, 1985. These were based on a platform, the running gear of the old Mark 10 Jaguars. <laughs> Wolseley Hornet. It's a standard one. We saw the supercharged one driving in before that. We followed that one in to the field here at Hankelo a little earlier. So there's at least two Wolseley Hornets here already. Triumph TR6 inbound. Opel Manta I200 Series 2 E Type 2 Plus 2 Long termers on the channel may just recognise this location, not just from the Audlum 2022 video that I did last year, but also the Weaver Wonder 2022 took place from this same location on E34 5 Series. Yeah, all the cars for the Weaver Wonder last year gathered over there. Lovely Saab 96, a V4 Saab 96. So if you think you may have seen this location before in previous videos, well, you probably have because. Uh, yeah, it features in a number of the uploads that I've done over the last year or so. Jeep CJ. It's a lovely oily ragger this one. I think we featured this one in the Malpas Vintage Rally from last year 2022. It's a lovely oily ragger if I get a chance. When we have a bit of a walk around the cars when they're parked up statically a bit later on today we'll have another close look at that one. Another gaggle of cars coming in. We've got an XK8 Coupe. Seven. Okay, little Caterham 7s. They do look a lot of fun. Lovely land fixed head in our favourite colour. Caterham R500, TR7 fixed head coupe. Very late Maestro. Is it this year 40 years of the Maestro? The Pontiac Catalina. Stand back a bit for this one. Never going to fit that one in shot. Burbly Burble. The Rover 800. That's a bit of new, don't they? Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> An old Bedford Royal Navy livery, complete with 
outboard and a period boat on the back. Good heavens above. Almost on par with our little Cooper. Yeah, we'll have to bring a trailer next year, I think. No, VW LT van, not one you see all that often nowadays. Jaguar Mark II, lovely, lovely car. A Curia Cost Blue, pretty much. What a beautifully shaped car they are. Maybe one day we'll scratch that itch. I didn't see this one driving them before. The Ashley. The Ashley body built by Ashley Laminates. These were sold to fit onto like a Ford Pop chassis or something like that. You'd buy a Ford Pop, a sit up and beg Pop, throw the body away. And this was an affordable way to get yourself a little sports car. And they were very popular in the late 50s, early 1960s. I don't think this one's on Ford Pop running gear anymore. And that's what the body was designed for. So this is the Ashley 1172. Then they squared off the front a little bit and made it into the Ashley Sportiva. I used to have a dark green one of these um, with the Ford Pop running gear and the aquaplane tuning parts on it, twin carburetors, twin MC2 SU carburetors if I remember right. That car's now in Germany. But yeah, this body went through a number of variations. So this, the 1172, then the Sportiva. And eventually that body shell was adapted slightly and it became the basis of the Reliant Sabre 4 and the Reliant Sabre 6. A car which I'm very fond of indeed. So yeah, that body shell saw a lot of use and a lot of life. But it's lovely to see this one here. We have seen it somewhere else before. Oh, I can see Morris Miner pulling in. Or Sunbeam Alpine as well. But yeah, I just wanted to have a quick look at this one. There's Dad and Harley having a chat. Sunbeams carried on, maybe straight to Audlem. In this driveway over here, I wonder if Harley's spotted this one yet. An MGB GT for sale. Complete with Wabasto roof. What's the story with this one? 80,000 miles from new, 2750. Recent service, including gearbox and engine oil. That's a tidy little user. Yeah, a bit of fun that one. Slightly modified MGTC, this one with cycle wings, you don't see that very often.
Ooh, another pre-war gem. We saw that BSA pulling in just a moment ago. Hey, we've got a Series 1 Morris 8 Tourer. Wow, that's a bonny, bonny little car. Got two Cortina or roast style wheels. Super clean car. Austin, this is an Austin 10 Litchfield. This is the sort of the later revised version of the old Chrome Rad Austin 10-4 of 1932 to 34. So that one will be about 35 or 36, somewhere around there. The mighty Austin 1800. Is it an Austin? It is an Austin. The old Land Crab, the ADO 17 design. That's a nice one. Still the classic cars pour in, we've seen several MGAs arrive, that may be the first fixed head. Bonnie little Nova, Cobra replica here, burbly burbly V8, Fiat 500, and big wheels, a bit of a bath vibe there with a the propped open rear lid. I think as there are some fairly dark clouds blowing in. We'll have a quick walk around while it's still dry. So let's have a quick look along row one. We've got the Bonilla at Hillman Imp. We spoke to the owner of that one at Crew Heritage a year or two back. Wolseley 1500 here. And the nice early one. Smaller front side lights. Slightly smaller grills as well at the front. The later cars had like Morris 1000 combined indicators and side lights and much wider grills on them. And the Ford Pop 103E. It's the chassis from these that the Ashley that I was looking at before was often designed to fit onto. So you chuck away the body put your racy sporty Ashley body on or maybe a Falcon perhaps there are loads of different bodies available it's a Lanchester LD10 the Rudge yeah where was I so yeah you chuck away your pop body and put a sporty fiberglass one on instead special building was a really big deal in the 50s like I was saying great to see that one still on its original registration number no one's ripped it off yet same for this 100E Prefect here side valve power both 1172 cc these two but the engine in these is the different unit it's an evolution of the engine in here very swish i do like these two doors whisper quiet 6.75 liter v8 yeah, like I was saying, the engine in this one is an evolution of the engine in that one. Both four cylinder, both side valve. These have a built in water pump, whereas these do not. And these also have adjustable valves, whereas these do not. Right, let's carry on along here. Another prefect here. I think that's a 10, is that a 107E? 107E. It is a 107E, isn't it? Overhead valve, 1960. isn't it? 1960. Mine's 1954. Right, got you. So that's 54, and that's, that's quite a late one, then, isn't it? And that's the Anglia engine, the 105E engine, isn't it? Is that the overhead? It's the overhead valve engine, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then that's 53. I think that one is the other. That's an E. Yeah. Prefect. That's an E493A Prefect. And this has got the same engine, the 1172, as in the little green pop over there. The larger version of the engine fitted to our Anglia. And this glorious Austin we've seen before. This vintage Austin. It's great to see proper early cars here, mixing it with the classics. Stunning nickel plating on here. Just has a slight yellowy hue, a tinge to it compared to straight chrome. Oh, what a stunning car that is. A Bonny little Morris J type. Land Rover Series 1. And Wolseley Hornet. This is the supercharged one with the Mercedes supercharger and hidden nestled away behind that bonnet. Got a clan. The clan clover. I think that was alpha powered. Yep. Yeah. 
I was going to carry on walking down the road, which I will do in a moment. I can see a couple of pre-war cars coming in, so I want to capture those driving in. Let's go and have a look, see what we've got. Very nice indeed. Is that a standard? I think that's a standard. Just a Behind that, a lovely little Riley. I think that's a Monaco. Well, I could be wrong. Another MGA. Wow, well, there's quite a few. I've never seen so many MGAs in one place before. It's a very bonny car, roof up. And an early Austin Healey. Back to row one, Wolseley 1500 with bonnet raised, showing off its one and a half litre B series engine. Single carburetor on those. Austin 7 box saloon and this wonderful Model T pickup. Wow, must be one of the oldest cars here. Car number one on the entry sheet. Oh, Bobby Dazzler, that is. Nineteen seventeen. Just checking behind me, make sure I wasn't going to get run over. So MGBs, the MG here, is that TC? Midget 1500, embrace of cream MGA drop heads, MGR V8, MGTF. So this was the evolution of the MGF, but without the hydro gas suspension. Try not to get knocked over by a 1964 Rover P4. Beautiful car. It's a lovely, lovely looking car, that is. 64 Mark 1 Cortina. It looks like it's prepped for a bit of rallying. But still they come in. A wartime Jeep. Silver Shadow 1. What a great event this is, it's always so well supported, like I said before, it's been established many years this has. And it's great to see all these cars here. We saw this one at the Middlewich Transport Festival just a week or two back. Quite a rare Punto Sporting, I think. Okay, right, where were we? MGTF, modernish. MGTFs, much older, 1950s, this was the last really of the original T-Series line that started pre-World War II by this point in time. This was like an interim model before the MGA was ready to go on sale. So you've still got the vertical radiator. Then it all changed when the MGA came along. But two beautiful examples of the TF here. Very appropriate registration on that one. Right. There's that beautiful bullnose Morris Cowley. What a cracker that is. This will be slightly later than the Model T we were looking at, but not by much. I can feel a spot of the damp stuff. So I think it's probably a good idea to do this walk around now. Oh. What a cracker that is. Should have brought my brolly. Here we've got a Rover P3, it's post-war. Rover P3 Sports Saloon with a low roof line and the two windows per side. A brace of minis, the Mini 95 van, and the little Mark III saloon, the two VW bay windows and the Renault 21 alongside them. Really, really nice sunbeam toll, but we see this one quite regularly. It led the cars off on the Weaver Wanda this year, just a few months ago. If you've not seen that video yet, please check that out. Yep, yeah, starting to fall a bit now, the damp stuff. And great little comma truck here. I say truck, pickup truck, drop side pickup. Riley RM. One of the facelifted XJS Jaguar coupes. Right, so a quick scoot down here. I'm not sure if we can get in front of all these cars because they're all lined up ready to take part in the parade, which is another hour or so's time. 
There's a Sunbeam Alpine. A Mark IV Escort alongside that. All sorts of cars here. The other Wolseley horn that we saw driving in before. A Mini 1000. Let me know in the comments which of these cars is the one you'd be taking home. Very smart Morgan. Sixty-seven MGB, somewhat modified. Quite a standard-looking car here. Nice to see one on the drilled steel wheels. Fiat Five Hundred, a lovely little car. MGB Roadster. It's that lovely A55 Cambridge Mark II. Got a W123 Series Mercedes Coupe coming in now, just over there. I can see a Thunderbird as well. Let's see if we have a quick look at that, see if that's coming in. There we go. The mighty Ford Thunderbird. Race of escorts. Series 1 Land Rover, very happy looking Series 1 Land Rover. We saw this one last weekend at WEM. Vehicles of interest gathering at WEM, which was last weekend. We've got an MG, either 1100 or 1300, never quite sure which. I'm not sure what year the changeover took place. This is about 1971, so I'm guessing it might be a 1300, a two door car, yeah, 1300. A two CV, I think we've seen this one before somewhere. And another wartime Jeep. Wowzers. We wend our way past this glorious A55 Cambridge. I do love the big fins on these cars. Got some nice goodies, some period goodies in the back window shelf as well, of which we approve. Janet and John. Car tour books, old camera brochure, the motor show catalogue. Earl's Court, that's pretty cool. We like that. We've got the Rover, the Rover Saloon. <laughs> and the Midgets. There's a little Moss. Here's Dad's MGB. And a bit of OCC and car traction merch in evidence. <laughs> Loads of these now available on the OCC uh, merchandise store. The Beetle. TR3A, very smart little car, B Roadster, Dolly Sprint, a 16 valve Triumph Dolomite Sprint, improvised weather protection on this B, That's a little yellow spitty, TR7 Sprint, a rare car that, got the Dolly Sprint engine in that one, didn't make many of those, a little Frog Eye Sprite, the original Austin Healy Sprite, the Mark 1. Twin carb A series engine in those, and there's a black one alongside that. I didn't see these driving in. Herald 1360 next to our MX5. The motorcycle and sidecar, are they coming in? No. And scoot along while the rain holds off for the most part. I'll try and for claim. Was that the last outing, I think, for the Triumph name? XJ Series 3, or 1985, is that XJ6? In which case it's got the 4.2 litre version of the XK straight six engine. Well, it could be a V12, but I think it's probably a six cylinder car. Yeah, red line at 5,000. I think the V12's got a higher red line on the Taco compared to the six. The V12 was a much later design engine, of course. I can trace its route back to the XK120 of 1948. That's when that engine first saw light of day. And I think the XK engine's final outing was well, certainly the last car that was fitted with the XK engine from new. It was probably that Daimler DS420 limo we saw coming in before. Got a Mark 1 Capri, 
1300. Another TF, another XJ Series 3, lovely car on the pepper pot alloy wheels. Very handsome machine. Porsche Targa, an XR3i Cabriolet. Ford Console Capri, lovely red car. We'll have a quick look at the other side of that one. Wow, that's a clean car. Another classic Ford here, Mark III Cortina GXL. There's the Firebird. XK, XK8. There's that DS420 with the, the old XK engine, a 4.2 litre XK engine. Try for TR6. We usually have quite a few TRs here. I've seen a few, but not as many as maybe in previous years. A Vauxhall VXR, Manta. These are pretty cool. There's that E-Type 2 Plus 2, Series 2 car, so that'll be the 4.2 litre engine in that one. The Vauxhall, is that the Omega? There's that E34 5 Series BMW, and this is that Saab 96, and there's a secret hiding under the bonnet of this one, in the shape of a turbocharger. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder how well that goes. No. <laughs> Over here, Dolomite. A roadster and a GT. And another roadster here on the end. I haven't seen any C's. No, no MGC's yet, no, no. Yeah, and the field is really filling up. There's still cars coming in. Yeah. going to be an excellent parade down from the, the green here at Hanklow, just a mile or two down the road into Wardlam itself. They close the road for this particular run, that's why it works so well. Many times you have car convoys and you're mixing it with regular traffic, but for this event they close the road temporarily and that makes a huge difference. This is a stunning rudge. Yeah, I do love this era, 1937, a little information sheet says. I love this era of motorcycle. Anything with a sprung saddle gets my vote. I like the scripture of the year. Yeah. It's probably one of my favourites. Yeah, they're just the beautiful, aren't they? Alright, next row, the mighty Pontiac Catalina. Oh, quite a rare maestro, which is a very late example of the breed. <laughs> Roads to B, many different colours of MGB here today. Fixed head TR7. Very purposeful looking little Lotus, make sure we don't walk on the splitter in the front now. Gorgeous Elan, we've seen that one elsewhere. A whole gaggle of caterums. I've had this for 13 years. Still cars coming in, I can see a Carmen gear, another VW based Carmen gears, another MGB I think, yeah, all sorts coming in. Something big and American, not quite sure what but we will have a look. Let's carry on over here. Mark III Min. There's that lovely little panda. See another little Austin coming in the 10 4. The BMW IZ, the Polo, the Heinkel, the Cambridge, the A60, Austin Cambridge. There's that little Morris Camper. Great car, that is. The MX-5 Mark One, the HC Viva, who remembers those? They used to be everywhere at one time. The Merc, and a split window camper.
Right, that's kind of wearing out the footwear a bit more. BSA, this lovely BSA, 1930s. Mmm, yeah, pretty select the box like on Daimler's, Lanchester's, and many Riley's. So, this is sort of in a luxury car? It would have been a quite a smart, sort of medium sized mm, car of the day. It is pretty select like. Yeah. 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 Just a nice little pre war saloon. It's the sort of car you don't see all that often. Yeah, I would have thought it's a four. Yeah. Mm. It's lovely, isn't it? The smell of bacon wafting from the stalls over there. We've got the Silver Spirit, the Rover 800, the facelifted car with a little grill. Is that Ikuria Cost Blue Mark II? It's lovely and original. This one. That looks like a really nice usable car. 3.8, biggest engine. It's funny, yeah, that's you lovely, don't see isn't many it? That aren't 3.8. No, but we saw a few. I don't know. We saw a few 2.4s down at Ragley yeah, Hall, didn't we? That was like the only time you see mm. 2.4s. GT, Morris Minor 1000. Wouldn't have been a classic car show if we didn't have at least one Morris Minor 1000 here. Mighty Aston, not quite sure what model that is. DB11. DB11, is it? Okay, Mark II Golf. A35 two door glistening in the sunshine. Oh, when the sun comes out, it's jolly warm indeed. Great little Beetle, and magnificent Rolls Royce, good heavens. I'll look on the interior, see if you can spot it. Oh, right. Oh, they're saying this has got a modern trans. Oh, it's got an automatic gearbox, yeah. isn't it? Ooh, not sure if the camera will pick that up. But, yeah. yeah. Very usable car, I imagine. It's also got some different rear lights. But what I like is, like, alright, do what you want underneath, but it still looks the same mm. on the outside. Yeah. There's yeah. no sort of. Yeah. Well, that's so. a beauty, that, isn't it? Now, carry on along here. Mark II Ford Zephyr. Nice, nice, yeah, nice six cylinder engine in those. And the TR3A Mark III Mini on a K plate. So many classics here. Some being told they're driving around over there, I'm not sure where that's going. And the Frog Eye, red TR6, slightly modified Anglia 105E on Mini Lights. Yeah, that looks That's great, that doesn't it? Morris convertible. MGA. And on the end here, that stunning Norton that we saw coming in before. Wowzers. Okay, more pre war goodness, that stunning Riley that we saw driving in before. Hello. Uh, I've got a standard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lovely car, and there's a clan, the Alfa Romeo powered clan, Lanchester LD10. So this is a Briggs bodied car. There were two versions of the LDT, the LD10, sold in the 19 sort of late 40s, early 1950s. This is the Briggs body car, all steel body. Yeah, these are pretty select. It was owned by Daimler. Was, Lanchester was part of Daimler. Mm. Yeah, lovely bonnet catch on these. Really That's nicely, fine. really nicely engineered bonnet catch. Very good quality little cars these are. Very underrated. There's the Abarth Fiat. The Cobra Rep. Fixed head, MGA. Quite a late one with a recessed grille, as I now know. Very, very sharp looking Vauxhall Nova. Moggy Miner on Mini Light style wheels. Four door car. Few mods in evidence with this one. Later seats, probably a lot more comfortable than the standard BMC offerings, I would have thought. <laughs> There's that 1800, great old cars there. There's that Austin Litchfield, the 10 4 Litchfield. Beautiful, slightly oily rag vibe with this one. The original paint by the look of it. Yep, this is a Litchfield, which is the replacement of the chrome rad. <laughs> Replace the chrome rad Austin 10 4s. Four door Mark II Cortina. 
Jaguar. I think this is a replica of the uh, XK120. Oh, is it auto, is it? In that case, yes. MGB, a very late one. Yeah, it's a lovely little Morris 8. Series 1 Morris 8 spoked wheels and chrome radiator surround tells us that's a Series 1. Later cars are the painted surround. TVR Griffith. Little Bath Fiat Spider. Based, I think, on the running gear of the MX-5 and the BMW Z4. Rolls-Royce corner here. A couple of beauties, two doors both. On a, on a drop head, hmm, Corniche, yeah. And the other, the fixed head, which I do like a lot. Nice pair of escorts. Yeah, there's those two escorts that drove in only a few minutes ago. Proper Carmen converted Beetle convertible. Lovely car, great colour. Always like cheerful colours on cars. There are too many drab coloured cars around nowadays. MGA, is that stunning Austin Healey. 100M. The Rover 110, P4 Series Range Rover, uh, Range Rover, just Rover. Mark 1 four door Cortina. Jeep Shadow 1, we saw this one at Middlewich the other weekend. Great little mini. Punto, Immaculate Punto, and a post war Rover P3 Sports Saloon. A comma pickup. An immaculate, look at that. Immaculate XJS. Mark 1 MX5, another one. I was very tempted with a saloon version of one of these 123s only a few days ago. I was very watching very attentively as an auction on eBay drew to a close. What a cracking little Trojan, beautiful little car that is, and that looks like a lot of fun. I can certainly see the appeal of getting into bubble cars. Mm. S2000 Honda, high revving Honda S2000, not Porsche, now is this a 911 or a 912, it's on the J plate. Let's have a look at the back and cheat, a 911T, so that's the air cooled 6 in that. MGB Roadster, same colour as Dad's, Harvest Gold, the Carmen Gear, same company, Carmen, as did the uh, proper convertible versions of the Beetle. Very stylish little cars these are. Talking of stylish cars, we also approve very much of these Rovers, pre or post war P2s and these, the P3s, the sports saloons with a slightly lower roof. They just look really, really sharp, I think. Beautiful quality, quality car. There's that Moggy. Is it Moggy? Oh, it's an Austin. That's the Austin version of the little Morris van. That was just to keep Austin people happy. There was still a lot of brand loyalty back in the day, so. They stuck an Austin badge and an Austin grill on the front of these for people who would only buy Austin products. Seems odd now. I don't think I don't think there's any brand loyalty around nowadays. But back in those days, it was a big deal. Okay, got an 85, 1985 Capri Mark II Escort, <coughs> the wartime Jeep and the Morgan. Next to the 2CV, an MG1300. This will take Dad back. He used to have an MG1100. It's one of the first cars I ever travelled in, was an MG1100. The grill of which adorns Ned the Shed, Harley's little workshop back at base. Yeah, that's the grill off one of those. That's on the cylinder head, the 12G106 cylinder head off the MG1100, which is also at home. Those are the two surviving things that we've got from that old MG. Twin carb, yeah, yeah, this is a sporty one. Was, the engine was very similar to that of the Mini Cooper. Over here, at the back of the field, pretty much are where most of the commercials are. So we've got a lightweight Land Rover here. Range Rover Ambulance. That's a bonkers car, I've never seen that before. Somerset. Hmm. Very cool indeed. And the stunning Mark 1. Bedford CA panel van. How nice is that? It's the CAS, the short wheelbase 
Bedford CA, they did the CAL which had the longer wheelbase, yeah. You can always tell the Mark 1s with those two-piece windscreens and the chunky grille. The Mark 2 CAs, they had a... The Mark 2 CAs have a one-piece windscreen, still quite shallow. And then the Mark 3 CAs have a much deeper windscreen, one-piece again. But this is a lovely Mark 1. There's our little Dodge hiding away at the back, seems to be hidden away there. Another Austin Badge van. This is a recreation of a vintage sort of 1920s ish era Boy Scouts truck. I think the running gear is actually more 1950s, I think. But a great job there. Yep. We've got a 1946 Willis Jeep here, CJ2, I think. I love the indicators. But it's super original, lovely directional indicators, similar to those on Big Dodge back He's at got base. The same reg problem as us, right? Yeah, 1946. So these were a slight redevelopment or you know, an evolution of the wartime Willis Jeeps. There weren't too many differences, they had larger headlights on these compared to the military Jeeps that we saw before over the back. Lovely paint, just looks really, really great. Everything on it just looks nice and old which we approve. But the main difference between the CJs, the post-war CJs and the wartime Jeeps is the uh, wartime jeeps have a fixed panel across the back here whereas the cjs they have a little drop down tailgate the paintwork just looks lovely it's all sort of proper oily ragger interior as well it's just mm. weathered so yeah it's a lovely little thing that is california as well just like our dodge yeah. so the dodge is 1947 this is california 1946 all these years later they find themselves in not terribly sunny Cheshire, yeah, both all both from California, California. Now this wonderful Bedford, look at that! What a fantastic setup that is. Isn't that amazing? Royal Navy, Royal Navy blue, an old outboard motor up there. A boat in the back as well. Yeah, there's a boat in there too. <laughs> well, well, that's great that isn't it great place to hide away if it if the weather turns yeah. it might be appropriate what a great setup that is we're just pondering now which trailer to bring next year behind yeah. the pickup that's, that's great that isn't it All very cosy in there. And on the end here, in the furthest corners of the field here at Hankelow, a Jowett Bradford pickup truck. Wow. Wow, is this? How great is that? Probably post war, I'd have thought late 40s, early 1950s. Very much the pre war look, mind you. But yeah. The Jowett Bradford. Bradford by Jowett. And I'm going to go and sit in undercover for a moment. So, the oldie dodgy. We'll do the job. A little racing car, fiberglass isn't going to come to any harm. <laughs> I think that looks pretty good in there. We've propped it up on an old 1944 wartime ammo case. I was hoping to avoid getting the, the pickup bed damp, but I don't think we're going to avoid it today. It showed rain about 3 4 o'clock this afternoon, but nothing this morning, so this is a little bit annoying. But never mind, oh, let's go and sit in there and get out of the rain. Oh, hello sir. Hello, hello there. there. Who's that us? Mr. Richard Jones. Oh yes. Back off all the commercials. Got the old matchbook in here for Dodge cars and trucks of 1940s. Old inspection light as well. Thought we'd bring that, put that up. Yeah. Hopefully it's just a passing shower. Here's the programme for the 2023 Audlem Festival of Transport. Get one of these every year. There we are. 294 Dodge Half Ton Pickup 1947. We were also thinking of bringing the uh, Renault 4CV to this one, but 
until I've tested it out a little bit more and uh, just make sure I'm on top of the uh, running issues that we've had recently. We thought stop starty in a queue of vehicles heading down into Wardland from here probably wouldn't be the best idea for it so that one's tucked away back at base but hopefully next year we'll have that here and this as well fingers crossed. Bagel deployed Pray for conversion of a Ford Corsair. Groovy Ford pickup truck. Also a California, according to the plate, 1953. Wow. A few cars parked up here on the overflow parking area. MGR V8, a red one. Austin 10.4 saloon at the back there. They did narrow and wide body versions of those saloons. Only built 32 to 34. Mark 2 MX-5 and a Mini. XK8 convertible, GT6 Mark III, two litre straight six under that bonnet, these always sound lovely. Oh, there's a big fan of those. A Z3 next to that, let's just nip through here. And there's that Sunbeam Talbot 90, we caught a glimpse of before. Very nice little saloons these are. Earlier cars had the wheel covers, the wheel spats. It was probably deleted by the time this one was made. Another HC Viva, a Rover 200 at the front there, a 214 SLI, bay window camper, Peugeot Coupe, a VDP, the Vandenplas 1500. These were based on the Allegro XK8 convertible. What's this mighty machine over here? I'm gonna have to cheat on this one. That's a Galaxy 500. Ford Galaxy, wow. A little Van der Plas version of the sort of late 80s Rover 200. Metro and a 350i TVR, the wedgie, late 1980s. Cracking little split window VW. 1964 plate, a B. The bright yellow. Tripe stag, and the sun's come out just as I get here. Always look good in nice, jolly bright colours. This is a rarity, a bondy queep or a keep. These are herald based, and if you look closely at those doors, you'll see that those are herald doors. Different door frames, the window, door windows are slightly different shape, but the doors and the quarter lights are Triumph Herald. The rest of it's fiberglass, but the doors are steel. And of course, it's got the steel separate chassis. That was a feature of the Triumph Herald. <laughs> a late example of a Mini Moak. Mark II MX-5. Prefect. A midget. Another bay window. Well, there's a few of those here today. An E46 Cabriolet. Allegro. Nice early Allegro on an M. That's cool. Sunbeam Alpine, Alpha Spider. And a Corsair Duo, a Corsair GT. Wow. That's a rare car that is now. And of course, a Crayford Cabriolet, or convertible alongside that. Uh, it's stopped raining now, that's good news. So, uh, fingers crossed it'll stay that way because yeah, loads of people who live on the route come out and wave and it's all very civilised and jolly. It's one of the friendliest of the car events that we get to throughout the year. But like I say, we've been doing this one since about, I don't know, 2004 or 2005, something like that. It's really well supported. All sorts of cars here, some old, some not so old, but yeah, a real variety. Dad's here discussing Woolsey 1500s, he used to have a grey one of those. Right, I think it's about 10 minutes to go until the parade into Wardlam itself. So I think we'll start heading in that general direction, even though we're quite a way back in the commercial section, so it will take us a little while to actually set off, I think. 
to Mrs. OCC and the MX5 will get there a lot sooner than we do, I think. Really classic. Oh, a little tonneau cover coming very useful on this little Austin Healy Sprite. People are leathering their cars down, ready for the parade. It's beautiful as Capri, isn't it? What a cracker. So many lovely cars, this wonderful Farina, the Rover. Hmm? If your car's in this, if you're taking part here in the Audlem Festival of Transport, let me know in the comments. Try to feature as many of the cars as we can, including this wonderful fairly early Alpine big fins who remembers the first Bond film was Sean Connery and he had one of these he was driving around one of these so technically I suppose this was the first Bond car although I think in the books he used to drive an open top Bentley a vintage Bentley there's that crazy turbocharged Saab 96 V4 many many modifications on this one super clean car this one Your Nick Sunshine looks like an undercover police car. A more leathering going on, this time on the Manta. We will drift slowly in this general direction past the gathering of many different caterums and this glorious pre war Rolls Royce. So many cars everywhere you look. Did I give you enough of yeah. Which is multiple. Uh, <laughs> Rolls Royce showing a 6.75 litre V8 engine. Saw this one at Middlewich just a week or two back. And right over the back here, a wee tucked up behind the little Bedford CA. Engines are starting to be fired up. Pre running, so right, let's get back over here. Like I say, it'll be a few minutes before we go nine minutes until the road is closed. So, Harley and I are going in the Dodge. Mrs. OCC is taking the MX5, and Dad's somewhere about still talking about Wolseley 1500s. I think, but yeah, that's uh, let's get back. Just double check, we've got everything sorted out in the truck ready for the run down into Audlem itself. Little Lotus race car in the back here, so it's pretty well wedged in. And we're only going at walking pace anyway, so that should be fine. And the first vehicles are just setting off on the parade now, headed by this Mark 1 Golf GTI. Fantastic Bedford with boats. Lovely straight six. A few more tractors.
stunning vintage Austin. And the distinctive lines of the Morris J type van. Well, I think we better go and get into the Dodge and just fire up. Mighty Farina, Rover P2, and there's Dad in his MGB GT. Two frog eyes. And there's the MX5. Still a couple of rows to go, but I think we will get installed in ye olde trucky. We're up and running.
run into second gear, so that'll be okay. Hopefully we'll keep rolling a bit. I don't like being stationary too long. <laughs> I think we're moving again now. Here we are, this is the main show field, the main show area here in Audlem at the end of our little trundle down from Hankelow into Audlem. It's filling up very nicely now. There we go, on the end of the row here, at the end of commercial row. Made it in one piece. Temperature only crept up by five degrees. It usually runs about 180 on the gauge that's in the down in the middle near the keys down there. It usually runs 180 and it crept up to 185 at the slowest point of the trip down so uh, yeah made it here as did the little race car in the back it's its first time here on the Audlem Festival of Transport so uh, yeah this is its debut visit Let's go and have a look around and just have a quick reminder of uh, what's here today and just in case we missed something when we were walking around the field before there's that glorious Mark 1 CA van I've not seen this one before anywhere How cool is that? Lovely sign writing, you can see all the little brush marks The camera probably doesn't pick it up but It's not lovely Such a cute little van. And there's a little Bradford, a Bradford pickup truck just post war. Crayford Corsair, the Corsair GT, the Alpha Spider, and the Alpine. It's rare that we overtake anything when driving the oldies, but today we overtook this a diesel field marshal. Fantastic old tractor this one, very distinctive dub 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 engine note. I can hear the Punch and Judy in the background, so yeah. One of the very few things I overtake when I'm behind the wheel of one of the oldies. Here's a car I wanted to have a close look at, this Bond Equipe. Now is this the four cylinder or has it got the six cylinder Vitesse engine? I've got a bit of information here, so let's have a quick look. This Equipe GT4S. 1934 cars of this model were produced from September 64 to January 67 based on the Herald chassis using the Herald scuttle windscreen and doors but with a fiberglass body designed by Lawrence Bond 1147 right there's the answer 1147 cc engine cool very distinctive looking car A few different variations of the keep were built over the years. Some had single headlights per side. This is obviously the twin headlamp per side. But yeah, you can see the Herald Origins if you look in the centre section of the car there with the scuttle, the screen surround, and the door. And of course, the very distinctive bonnet catches. Yeah, let's have a quick look at the back. Yeah, it's not every day you see one of those. Kind of a sporty looking car, nice wooden dashboard, straight out the Herald I'm assuming. Lovely wood rim, steering wheel as well. And the Punch and Judy's. 
Yes, OK, we'll carry on this way. There's that V8 Ford truck. Bit of a pattern to look there. Heavens, nice old California plate. <laughs> Someone's been busy with the sandpaper. Oh, like the wheels. What a groovy looking truck. Nice to see another old American pickup here. Okay, let's carry on down here. Mark 2 MX5. Didn't see this one before. 124 Series Coupe Mercedes. It's a little Rover 214 SLI. Another split window VW. I don't think we saw this one when we were walking around before either. How lovely is that? Love the curtains. So we're peering through the window. Hopefully we won't interrupt someone's lunch. How nice is that? So a quick peek in through the door here. It is open, so... Tailored, dated cushion. 6th of April, 1966. It's not lovely. You can see why these campers are so popular. They're just lovely things. GT6 bonnet raised, showing off the 2 litre engine and the amazing engine accessibility of these cars with the tilt forward bonnets. Mm. 2 litre engine, twin Stromberg carburetors over there. Oh. Great car. So a quick scoot down here, there's a Galaxy 500 that we saw before, the convertible. Wow. Four oh six coupe Peugeot TVR. A little smart, a little smart roadster. What year is that? Two thousand and four. Getting on for nearly twenty years old. That now. It's a little VDP fifteen hundred. The later equivalent alongside. And the doors are open on the other split window camper down there. There's a the Yoldy Dodgy. This one's a 64. Now two Austins. Now I keep saying whenever I see this, Litchfield, this is the, the evolution of the 10.4, the Chrome Rad 10.4. And unusually, Ooh. we have got a 10.4 Chrome Rad car alongside. So you can see the many similarities. The main body is the same between on the two cars. So those are built 32 to 34. And this was sort of 35, 36, somewhere around about there. So Austin updated the design, like they did with the Ruby and the Austin 7s. They put this sort of painted radiator cowl on around and in front of the radiator, whereas on the chrome rad car you actually see the radiator with the chrome surround. So this was just like a refresh, a restyle if you like, just to keep the design looking reasonably fresh and up to date. So it's a fairly simple rework, slightly different bonnet as well. So you've got these three opening vents on the side, whereas the 10-4 has got the louvered bonnet sides. But under the skin, I think they're very similar indeed. Like I say, the body from the screen back, I think is pretty much identical. Both four-door cars. So these are just like slightly bigger brother to the Austin 7s, really. And yeah, it's great to see the two of them together. And it's nice that we can actually do a bit of a comparison of the two cars. Semaphores, the optional semaphore indicators there. Many of these cars wouldn't have been fitted with any indicators when they were new, so often people would fit their own on the side there, on the side of the scuttle. Yeah, it's quite a treat to see the pair of them together. So many people out and about today. We've got a mixture of car owners walking around and just people from the village and near, nearby villages and towns as well, because people come from all over for this particular event. Such a real variety of older cars here. This lovely MG 1300. I know Harley was pretty taken with this one. It's just a bit like a Mini Cooper, but with a little bit more room in it, effectively. And a quick scoot along here past the 2CV and the Morgan. Lovely set of badges on there. Well, look at that. Not, uh, Nantwich and District. Lovely badge, that one. Morgan Sports Car Club. 
Ooh. Very nice too. Get your toy. Get Is that Carmen gear? Get your toy. Get it. Ooh. I've got the VW wheels, a bit of a giveaway that we've got VW mechanicals under that swoopy low bodywork. Of course the VW badge on the front is a bit of a giveaway too, but, but yeah, great looking car. There's that 911T. Ooh, there's my youthful assistant honing in on the Ford Thunderbird, the T-Bird. MX5, we see this one around a fair bit. More polishing on the XJS. The immaculate car, that is. This lovely comma. We saw this one at Gorsworth Hall. Is that a couple? <laughs> if you've not seen the Gorsworth Hall video yet, please check that one out on the elsewhere on the channel here. Ooh, nice trunk. Ooh, it's just <laughs> begging to be filled with something. What would you put in there? I wonder. Hmm. Oh, it's a lovely little truck, this one. Very shiny Mini on the end of the row here. And over here we have a gaggle of motorcycles. Let's have a quick look at those. So we've got a modern Royal Enfield on the end here and that glorious rudge that we saw before. What a beauty that is. 1937 500cc. That is gorgeous. An aerial Suzuki 750. Big old Triumph 1964. Kawasaki. Another aerial. Very racy looking Norton here. Wowzers. That looks like it means business. <laughs> One of my favourite colours for a Morris Miner. Lovely shade of green. The land crab that we saw before and this immaculate Cortina Mark II. Jaguar. MGB. So many cars. This is this lovely A35 which we may have seen on the channel before. It's featured on here before. Isn't that a cracker that is? 948cc engine of course in there. Got a single Zenith carburetor, if memory serves. Ooh. Honey. MGA Roadster in red. TVR Griffith and the little Fiat. Let's carry on down here. There's the Rolls Royce Duo. Roof down. Someone sounds happy. Next row, the Rover P4, the Abarth, and the Aunt Lanchester. Now, I was telling you about this one being Briggs Bod, and I was trying to remember what the other coach builder was that did the bodies on these, and it's Barker. It just came back to me now. So, Barker did a very coach built version of this with ash frame, whereas this was all steel. So, uh, in many ways, this is probably the slightly easier car to take on, especially if you're buying a project car. Because when you get into ash framing and all that, it does begin to get quite expensive. These are cracking little cars, real quality little cars these are. 
Briggs, of course, did the bodywork on many of the Fords of the 50s as well, and you can see some similarities between this and, say, that sit-up and beg Ford Prefect that we saw before. There we go. Ooh. Really nice little car. It's wonderful, wonderful shape, I think those. There's that bonny little clan and the standard, the pre-war standard. We like standards. We also like Riley's. Morris Thousand, now what colour is that? I know it looks brown, but what's the official name? Is it Rose Taupe? I've got a feeling that Dad bought Mum a Morris Mine of this colour in the 19, mid-1980s, maybe, something like that. But didn't stay very long. It's a lovely 3.8 Mark II. And the BSA, that rare pre-war BSA here on the end of the row. Bit of info in the window of this console Capri now. So let's have a quick shifty at that. Oh. Well, incredible condition. Cortina GXL, the 2000 GXL. Rare car, top of the range pretty much, I would have thought. Actually, the window's open because usually the windows are closed and we can't have a proper look whenever I see one of these GXLs at a show. But this one's got the window open, so let's have a proper look and we can have a, a closer look at the interior. Wow, it's like new in there. Uh. Anyone watching this remember owning one of these? really wild the shape of the uh, dashboard in these it sort of slopes away it's sort of the top of the dash is quite close to you and then it really slopes away as you get down towards the pedals but yeah it's an incredible condition how this has survived i really don't know it's in amazing condition. There's a DS four twenty. So a quick scoot round here just in case there's anything we missed. Lots of people having their lunch. We don't want to interrupt them. They'll get in their way. Dad's busy gassing to somebody about MGBs, I imagine. These are the original air cleaners that have been recently reinstated. It did have some K&Ns, I think, when Dad got it. But it's back on the proper original air cleaners now with Unipart stickers. It looks way better. It actually looks really tidy under the bonnet of this one. Right, I'll leave him to his conversations. Let's carry on up here. Just have a quick look round again, just in case there's anything we missed. Bits and bobs. This is lovely, this tour. Sunbeam Talbot. I'm guessing that's probably 
probably just post-war, I would have thought. Very much a pre-war car in design and pretty much everything, but I've got a feeling this is probably just post-war. Oh, no. <laughs> there we go. 1946. Very swish little four seat tour. Perfect for a do like this. You can see the bonnets up on the Ford Model T, so it'd be well, it'd be rude not to go and have a look, wouldn't it? Let's go and have a look over here. So here we go. There's a Model T, a brass rad Model T. Wowzers. We heard this one running before and it's been taken off the trailer and it sounded just like that 24 Dodger we used to have. So a big torquey four cylinder engine. Wooden wheels very similar to those we had in the Dodger course and they like the Dodge again. No front brakes. So they've got brakes on the back. So it's probably the same setup, yeah, it's the same setup as we had on the Dodge. So you've got brake linings on the outside of the drum, that's operated on well, the Dodge certainly, it was operate, that was operated by the foot brake. And then there's another set of linings inside the drum, which are operated by the, the handbrake, or the emergency brake, as they were often called on cars of this era. So when you're actually driving down a very wet road, actually, the handbrake, the emergency brake as it was called, was often far more efficient than the foot brake, because the linings of the foot brake get wet as you go through puddles and whatnot. But actually, the emergency brake linings inside the drum stay drier much longer than these do, so you do find yourself using both brakes when the weather's wet, just to sort of pull up in a reasonable space. So, anyway, very, very smart indeed. A little wooden pickup body on it. Left-hand drive, so presumably an American car, as opposed to one of the right-hand drive UK assembled cars that were built up at Trafford Park in Manchester. Uh, Ford made in USA. They were also assembled in Canada and probably other countries as well. A box, box saloon, the Austin 7 box saloon. The Wolseley 1500 that Dad was chatting to the owner of for many, many minutes before we set off on the parade down here toward them. And there's that supercharger installation on the Wolseley Hornet. This is a proper oily rag of this international. <laughs> Looks very, very original, original paint. Just how an old tractor should look, in my opinion. I mean, I love the restored ones as well, don't get me wrong, but there's something about seeing one that's worked to life and still looks like a working vehicle. Wow, these are huge, look at that. Is it, is it just... Here we are, on the front row. Oh, what a great finish. It's an unusual mascot on the cowley. So magneto in uh, magneto ignition there, so all the four leads off to the spark plugs. SU carburetor. We've got a gravity fuel feed, I think. Yeah. If we follow the copper pipe all the way back, I think there is a fuel. In fact, there is the fuel filler there, so the petrol tank is under there, and then that gravity feeds down into the little carburetor down there. Just been chatting to the gentleman who owns that bullnose cowley and the mascot. The mascot um, was a Brown Brothers. Brown Brothers, they sold many car accessories back in the day. And uh, it's registered design of 1918. And apparently it was first fitted to an old Daimler, a very early Daimler, probably in the 1920s sometime. So that was the, just a little bit of the backstory with that cat mascot 
on the lovely little bullnose cowley. Right, I can see my youthful assistant stood over the back there, so let's go and see what he's been up to. Seems to be chatting to someone else. Seems to be chatting to people quite a lot lately today, so uh, no doubt there'll be some owner interviews on his car traction video. Right, so we're just going to make our way down here because the canal is situated just at the bottom of this hill and apparently there are some old canal boats here today so let's go and have a look at those. Ooh, what do we have here? Another bullnose cowley. This time a two-seat tourer outside Audland Mill. Ooh, isn't that a beauty? Yeah, there's quite a gathering of historic narrowboats here. Beautiful sign writing on that one over there. Trying not to trip over the wire, uh, the ropes and end up in the water. That would be very unfortunate indeed. Ooh. Another example of wonderful sign writing. Anderton up near the boat lift in Northwich. Ooh, let's have a look inside here. Quick peer in. Old Lister engine there. Shroppy flies popular today. Yeah, Trying not to walk straight into the water. You can see some steam traction engines down here, so let's go and have a quick look at those. I didn't know any of this was down here. Oh. This is the definition of voidy rag. Yes. Even more historic narrowboats down here. Registered in Birmingham, this one. Will and Hall. Mm. Mm, goodies for sale. Mm, old things. Nice label on there at one time, isn't it? So many narrowboats, I didn't realise there'd be this many here. It's a lovely old no-tech lamp on that one. Oof. Right, let's head back towards the show field, I think. It's great to see these old steamers here. Before engines came along, narrowboats were horse drawn. Morris Cowley's on, off. Wandered out to the main road and look at this magnificent Austin. And behind that, the Sharabang. Yeah. 
it. How much room is in the back of there? Yeah, so there's uh, small seats that can go. That's there, it's like the petrol filler under the seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. So wow. it comes out. Yeah, yeah. oh, does it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Take, yeah. take the lid off and then mm. you've got telescopic. You so the through. tank is, is it what, across there, under there? Uh, the tank it? itself goes. Or is it sort of lengthways? Sort uh, of? Goes that way. Does it? Oh, right, it's right. About to there, yeah. and then you've got the battery box there, <laughs> uh, there's a little secret box down there. Well. So it's from the Isle of Man, this originally. Is it? Right. Yeah, yeah. So it was a taxi. Was it? Right. Taxi, yeah. yeah. So if you get a picture of the tax disc on the mm. show. Oh yeah, it's a hackney cab, is it, or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hackney. So that, that was its original... Uh, right, no. So it's, it's, it was its original... Oh, sort of let's have a look, yeah. So Isle of Man, Taxi cab. Where else is this? Little calometer there. Early 50s. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, have you had this one a while then? Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not moved for over 10 years. No. <laughs> Up Just till a, this sort of last week, 10 days. So, what size engine's in that then? Is it sort of. Uh, so it was I 20s, think, I, yeah, I think it's about two and a half, three litres, something mm. like that. Yeah, yeah. Roughly. Yeah. So is it four or six? Six, or six yeah. 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 Well, um, it's a lovely four. looking thing, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's an engine and a half, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Well, well, so you got, obviously got, so the water pump's in the middle. Yeah. Mag at that end. Yeah. Starter. No, no. Gen uh, was that the dynamo? Is it? Yeah. Oh that's right. The generator. The starters uh, on the back end of the gearbox. Oh, the, the starters over there. Is it? Right, yeah. right, right. Because I had to put a new starter on it. Well, so everything, so everything starter. runs off the uh, water pump driver, really, yeah, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's, um, that's cool. So yeah, so. Mhm. Mm yeah. yeah, yeah. So I've just done a well, quick repair on the alley here. And the old belt. Yeah. Yeah, the um, old big wide flat belts. Yeah, yeah. It starts, it starts great. Yeah. yeah. Flat, did you have to morning. did you have to do much to it to fire it up after ten years? Or? Um start motor spring stacks on it. Uh, it. so that was the biggest job, just trying to get parts. Uh, mm. Battery, new plugs. Yeah, yeah. new battery. Yeah. Um a fresh fuel through the works and Yeah, blow blow the uh you know just have another quick look in the back again. I love these handles, they're beautiful handles, aren't they? Like a railway, aren't they? Like yeah. off a railway carriage. Wow. They, they built taxis properly then, didn't they? And the roof opens up. Yeah, roof opens. You've got, you've got a smoker's hatch, is it? Yeah. Uh, and then you've got, obviously, this oh. will come up. Yeah, well. you've got your winder there for the partition. The luxury of luxuries, these were. <laughs> The taxis were a bit different in them days, weren't they? Who oh, was it? A taxi, just a general taxi, or for like a hotel? Because sometimes hotels had their own taxis, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, um, it was just an old. Was it? Taxi, was it like yeah. a regular taxi? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you've still got double double glazing look on the glass. Yeah. Even back there in double the... glazed. Wow. Yeah. Didn't realise they did double glazing yeah, yeah, back yeah. then. Wow. Well, it's really comfy, you know. I bet it is, yeah. 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 It's real, real nice. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful, isn't it? I guess softly sprung, a nice yeah. long wheel, nice long wheelbase. So yeah, really nice. It'd be really comfy, wouldn't it? Yeah. So yeah, it didn't didn't take a lot to. No, no. Get yeah. it going, just the yeah. the shape of the seats is just lovely, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what a what a treat to see that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. A little manual indicator there. Oh, great. Yeah. So what's that? So Bristol Pneumatic well, Tools Limited solid. Fish Ponds. Solid rails. You know, like the old steam, steam engines. Yep, solid rubber tyres on this beauty. Like I say, 1912 wooden mud guards. Oh, oh, incredible car, look. Oh, shower bank, look at the steps to get up into here. Just imagine folding that roof back for a day out to the seaside. There's the fuel tank on the front. What an incredible vehicle that is. Again, wooden mud guards.
And the old hooter. Look at that, the old hooter. All right, yeah. And the door is open. Let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a peer inside. Wow. So can we stand on these? Can we, can we have a look? Wow. <laughs> Incredible. No windscreen or anything in this beauty. Almost vertical, the column. Lovely Albion branded pedalers down there. Yeah, that's a good time. Old oil pressure gauge there been added. No surprises seeing a tub of this in here. Oh, we'll walk back through the centre of Audland towards the show field. It's a lovely little village this is. Always plenty going on. Lovely old buildings as well. I know some people who watch the videos here on the old classic car channel, as well as the vehicles that we obviously look at, they like to see a bit of the surroundings, some of the buildings, especially if you're watching this and you're not in the UK. It just gives you maybe just a bit of an idea of what some of the villages are like here. Well, here we're on the sort of the Cheshire, it's almost on the Cheshire, Shropshire and Staffordshire border. Staffordshire's not far over that way, and Shropshire's a few miles behind. This is Cheshire that we're in, but it's very close to both. And there's the old Triumph, looks like he's heading off now. There's the Lord Commermere here in the centre of Audland. Lots and lots of little independent shops, which is always good to see. Right, I don't know where the other two have got to. Dad's still at the showground, I think. This is where we came up before, if we just nip along here. The convoy, the parade, came up from that direction down there, down the hill next to the church. And then we did a turn across here and went up to the, the main show field. Let's get off the road. Yeah. Lovely old pub. Range Rover Ambulance is going now. I think one or two people will start to disappear now. It's approaching three o'clock. The weather forecast did show a bit of the damp stuff and true to form, there is a little bit of damp stuff in the air, but we'll stick around a little bit longer yet. I'll come and sit on this side, see what it's like from the passenger point of view. Passenger POV. A couple of years now, be here. A couple of years and you'll be there with you. Yeah. <laughs> so which one would you bring to this show if you had a choice? This. This. And then the standard. Oh, a little late. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. Well, last year it disgraced itself, didn't it? But um, <laughs> since then it's been pretty good. The only time it's last time, though. Yeah. Well, you know, they all have their little uh, idiosyncrasies, don't they? But uh, one thing we did establish as we were driving down here in the parade was how effective this Mopar Deluxe heater is. It was actually putting out quite a lot of heat, and that was without even opening. I think this vent thing must open somehow. There we go. What a great little accessory that is. And it's got these vertical bars reminiscent of these. Is it a Dodge only product? Well, it's Mopar, so it's, yeah, Dodge. So it's a proper period heater. Right, well, as the 105E heads away, I think we will wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed our visit to the uh, Audlum Festival of Transport 2023. Don't forget the video from last year is also on the channel, that's still here, so check that out as well if you want to have another look at what goes on here in Audlem. And uh, yeah, there'll be many, many more videos along before too long, so thanks for watching. Bye for now, from us both. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.